Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Maurice. And I'm Yash. And we're engineers that work on the APIs for the G Suite editors, uh, doc sheets, and slides. And in this session, we're going to do a deep dive on two end-to-end -end scenarios we build using these APIs um, and show you how you can build on the docs editors. So we're going to be going through a lot of code. Um, it's OK if you don't follow every single line. Uh, we're going to give you links to the documentation and links for you to get the code after this session. Uh, but the goal of the session is to give you a taste of what a real life integration uh, using the docs editors looks like and hopefully give you some inspiration so you can go home and build your own integration. So we're going to hit on some of the things that we've built in the past year um, and also give you a sneak peek of some of the new things we're currently working on. So what are these APIs? What platforms do they run on? So the first platform we'll talk about is AppScript. AppScript is a JavaScript-based development uh, platform that um, is built into G Suite. Um, my favorite part about AppScript is really how easy it is to use. Um, there's 40 plus apps and services built in. It handles authentication for you. It runs in the cloud. Um, it's very easy to, run, to write a few lines of code, get data from a spreadsheet, put it into a presentation, um, move it around, um, add custom UI into doc sheets and slides. Um, it's an extremely productive framework, and it's really easy to get started. The other types of APIs we offer are REST APIs. Uh, we have two public REST APIs um, available today. One is for Sheets, and the other is for Slides. Uh, yesterday, we announced a developer preview of a REST API for Docs, and we'll show you a little bit more about uh, that later. So these REST APIs are great for server-to-server -server interactions. So for example, if you have a web app internally that talks to a legacy data store, you can add an export to Sheets button on that web app, and you know, your code can hit your legacy on-prem data store and push that data into Sheets. Um, and it's much easier for users to work with than having to download a CSV and upload it again into Sheets. Um, so these REST APIs you know, bring the docs editors to your applications, uh, whereas AppScript is very well suited to bring your applications into the G Suite editors. So what do these platforms mean for your business? Um, you know, we, we know that knowledge workers spend a lot of time getting data from data sources, formatting them, uploading them somewhere else, um, and getting them ready for, for analysis. And with the REST APIs and AppScript, you have a toolkit that lets you automate a lot of those tedious workflows and let people focus on uh, things that actually matter and add value. So here's a quote from uh, one of our G Suite customers, Whirlpool. And you can tell how pumped up he is about AppScript and how um, easy it is to use and how quickly they can get valuable things out of it. Um, and hopefully after this talk and you see some AppScript examples, hopefully you'll be equally as pumped as, as Daniel is about building with AppScript. So with that background, I'd like to start going through our samples um, and showing you what an actual AppScript integration looks like. Um, so for this first sample, we're going to go through a simple invoicing workflow. Um, so let's say your company uses Salesforce to keep track of how much customers said they will pay, um, and it's been a quarter since then, and now you want to find out how much they've actually paid you. And if there's a difference, send them a dental reminder with an invoice um, from Google Docs. So I'll switch to the demo. OK, so the first thing we'll do is that we have to figure out how much our customers actually have paid us uh, in the past quarter. So um, earlier at the conference, we've talked about a new native integration between Google Sheets and BigQuery. And I've used that here uh, to get the received payments from BigQuery. Um, so you can, I'll show you quickly the query that I ran. Um, I'm getting the accounts and the sum of the paid amounts in Q1 of this year, um, doing grouping and ordering. And if I ran this query, it would generate a spreadsheet just like this with the accounts and the amounts that the users, uh, that the, our customers have paid us. So that's step one. The next step is let's go to Salesforce and find how much they said they would pay so we compare the two numbers and then generate some invoices. So to talk to Salesforce, I wrote a Sheets add-on. An add-on is a way for you to write app script 
and publish it to others so others can install it and use it in their spreadsheets or docs or, or presentations. So um, you can write add-ons and publish them privately into your domain, or you can publish them externally as well. So when you write an add-on, um, you get this uh, entry in the add-ons menu um, that your script creates. Um, and to let's get started. We're going to sign into Salesforce. So I click on that button. The first thing it asks me to do is actually go through the, the Salesforce OAuth flow. Um, the script popped up the modal dialog. Um, it gave me a link to sign in. I click on that. Uh, we get the Salesforce OAuth page. I sign in. And then if you're familiar with OAuth, the way it works is you get sent to a sign-in page, you complete authentication, and then you get redirected back with some tokens in the, in the, or in the URL that you can then use to authenticate with the, with the, uh, the API that the OAuth page serves. Um, so here we've re been redirected back from Salesforce, and our app script is saying, success, we have the tokens. Now we're ready to go. So before I get to showing you how um, we can actually call Salesforce. Let me walk you through the things you've seen so far um, from the code perspective. So the first thing you'll see is this on open function. This is called every time an add-on um, is installed on a sheet, and the sheet is opened by an end user. Um, this is commonly used to create menu items, and this is what I'm doing here. Um, you see I'm adding to the add-ons menu, and I'm giving it the name of the menu item and the name of an app script function that will be called when the user clicks on that menu item. So the first one is this login function. Um, it grabs an instance of the Salesforce service. Um, and in, what this does is that I'm using an OAuth 2 library. Um, it's open source. You can grab it off GitHub right here. And it, it's a really easy way to integrate App Script with public web APIs that use OAuth authentication. Um, so here I'm giving it the configuration it needs to uh, talk to Salesforce, so the login page, uh, the URL to get uh, tokens. I'm giving it my client credentials. And I'm giving it a callback that will be called to render that success page you saw earlier. So you know, this is what the callback looks like. I, give it, I get the request from the app framework, which is now serving uh, a, web, a regular web request. Um, and I can give it, and based on that, I can say success or denied. So that is the, the get Salesforce service and how that works. Um, the last part of the login flow was showing users that modal dialog that uh, gave them the link to go to Salesforce. Um, I do that in this show link dialog method. And this is an example of how to do very simple custom UI inside the docs editors using App Script. So I'm using HTML service. Uh, this lets me create templates inside of App Script and pass in data to them, and then render that template as a modal dialog using spreadsheet app show modal dialog. Um, the link dialog file is just plain HTML. As you can see, there's variables for the URL and the message um, that are displayed to users. So that covers the code for the sign-in flow. Um, as you see, it doesn't take a lot to get authenticated with a public API. Um, and now let's actually call it and um, see what it does. So I'm back in my spreadsheet. I close this out, and I go back to the add-ons menu and I want to run a query on Salesforce. Qu uh, Salesforce has support for Salesforce Object Query Language Queries, or SQL. Um, it's kind of like SQL, but works on Salesforce objects. Um, and if I managed my clipboard properly, it would have been there, but it's not. All right, so I pasted a simple SQL query into the dialog. I'm doing something very similar to the query um, I had in BigQuery. I'm selecting all of my opportunities and the sum of their amounts, and I'm filtering by the ones that we have won and we have closed. So I run this query, and now my app script is hitting the Salesforce public API, getting the, the response back, and adding that as a new sheet in my spreadsheet. So let's walk through how that works. Um, it uses that same Salesforce service that I set up earlier um, to get the authentication tokens and make the request. Um, so before you do that, uh, we have to ask the user for the query they want to run. Um, so again, we're using some, uh, some simple methods to get input from users now. Um, the spreadsheet app get UI has a prompt method that I'm using. Uh, this is similar to JavaScript prompt, if you're familiar with that. Um, and users paste in their queries, we get it back. And if they click OK, we go ahead and run the query itself. 
So to run the query, we hit the Salesforce public API. Uh, here I'm using URL fetch app. URL fetch is, uh, is the way in app script that you can hit any public web endpoint uh, with it. You just give it a URL and some, you know, some parameters and headers, um, and you can you know, hit any, any web URL you need. So I'm telling it I want to run this query endpoint on the Salesforce REST API, and I get back the query results as JSON, which I then parse and then put on the spreadsheet. So that's the method I'm calling here on line 58 uh, when I get my results. And the rest of this method is taking those results that come back as a JSON object and I'm processing them so I can put them on the spreadsheet. So I'm creating a 2D array in output values and I'm creating the, the grid that you see on my spreadsheet inside that 2D array. And then I use the, the spreadsheet app API to get a range on the new sheet I just inserted of the same dimensions as a 2D array, and I pass the 2D array uh, directly to sheets so I can fill in those cells. Um, so you can also do this one cell at a time. Uh, that's fine, too. Um, but when you're dealing with larger data from a public API, uh, you'll get much better performance if you build up that 2D array and just pass it in, in one go. Um, OK, so we have our data from Salesforce. Um, it looks like this. It's doesn't look like a great spreadsheet. And you know, I definitely don't want to fumble around with a spreadsheet for 10 minutes here. Um, so we, we need to do our analysis. We have to compare this, the numbers that we got from Salesforce with the numbers we got from BigQuery earlier, and see if there's any differences in the amount of money we've been paid. So to do that, I'm going to run a macro. Uh, macros are a new feature to Sheets that we launched earlier this year. And they're a great way to automate repetitive tasks um, and um, you know, run them over and over again. So you know, obviously, this is a very useful feature if you're doing manual things in a spreadsheet. Um, but from a developer point, developer point of view, the best thing about macros is that they just generate regular app script code that you can interact with and look at um, you know, just like any other app script. So this is the macro that I just ran. Um, it grabs the active spreadsheet. It does a bunch of stuff. It re re resizes columns. It sets number formats. It does a VLOOKUP. It fills this, the cells down. Um, it adds some conditional formatting. So you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And the great thing about macros is that instead of you having to go through the app script documentation and figuring out all those API calls you need to make to get your spreadsheet to look exactly like you want it, you can do it by hand in the editor while you're recording a macro and get the app script, app script code that you can then use to make your spreadsheet look like what you want. Um, so instead of looking at documentation, the app just tells you. Um, it's like having an expert in spreadsheet app sitting next to you telling you kind of what to do. Uh, so it's, it's really cool from a developer point of view as well. So we have our, we've done our analysis. We see that uh, there's a lot of people that owe us a lot of money. Um, so let's go ahead and generate an invoice for the ones that are, are kind of outliers. Um, so we'll start with these two. And I'll select the two rows that I'm interested in, and then I'll go back to my demo menu, and I click Generate Invoices. So what I'll, while that's running, I'll show you uh, kind of what it's doing. So I have this Google Doc. Uh, it's like a template invoice. Um, you see it has um, some, var some variables and curly braces that correspond to the values in my spreadsheet or in Salesforce that I want to fill in with data from the spreadsheet. And I'm using App Script to grab things from the spreadsheet and from Salesforce, and I'm plugging them in to the template. So here's one that is finished generating. Um, as you can see, it looks just like the template from before, um, but now we have the customer's name and address, we have the t today's date, and we have the total amount that they owe us uh, from the spreadsheet. So let's take a look at what it takes to do uh, something like that. Um, and you'll find it's pretty straightforward, I hope. Um, so from the menu, we call this generate invoices method. Um, it grabs the active range. That's the, the current user selection. Um, and we read those two rows. And then we call this generate invoice method. So generate invoice uses drive app and document app, um, two built-in a uh, APIs for drive and docs. Um, we make a copy of our template. We put it in the drive folder that we want it to go in. We open it in docs. We run this Salesforce object query language query to get the name and address of the accounts that we're interested in. And then we use the docs API to um, do find and replace on the document. 
um, you know, we're replacing those variables that were in curly braces with the actual values that we got out of, um, we got out of either the spreadsheet or from Salesforce. Um, and finally, we return the URL, which we then put on the last column of our, of our spreadsheet. So now our invoice is ready to go. We can go and send, send those on to our customers. So the final step that I want to show you is how you can use AppScript to summarize this information and put it in a presentation that you can show to your boss or to your leads um, so you can tell them that someone owes us $1.9 million. Um, so go back to the demo. I click on Generate Report. And here, AppScript is generating a chart that summarizes the, um, what I had in the table and gives me a link to the final report that I have in Google Slides. So I can click on that, and I can see the, the presentation that we just generated. Um, it has, it's very simple, it has a title, um, and it has the chart that um, we created from in, on the spreadsheet. And the cool thing about this chart is that it's actually linked to the spreadsheet. So if you um, click on that open source link, um, it, goes, it takes you right back to where the data was. Um, so you can see the, the, the work that went into it uh, and double check any numbers that you need. So let's see how you can generate simple presentations using AppScript. Um, so here's the generate report method uh, that I called from the menu. Um, the first thing it does is that it creates a chart. Uh, as you see, the chart API is pretty full featured. It has a lot of uh, options to it. Um, I will confess, I recorded a macro and copy pasted this code um, so I could run it here. Um, so I create a chart, we put it on the active sheet, we insert it. Um, then we use Slides app, which is the native integration between AppScript and Slides. Uh, this is new in the past year as well. Um, and it's pretty straightforward to create very simple presentations, either from templates or from scratch. Um, here, I'm grabbing the first slide. It's always the title slide. Uh, we put the, the title in the, the, center text, the center title placeholder. Uh, we append a new blank slide. We add that chart that we created earlier. And then we get the URL of the presentation so we can show to the user um, using show link dialog again. So that's our, that's our first demo. Um, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to do this kind of operation between um, getting data from an external system, put it in sheets, manipulating it uh, either, either by hand or using a macro, um, and getting things into slides. Let's go back to the slides. All right. So we'll quickly summarize what we saw. Uh, we talk, hit a public API. We used the new native integration with BigQuery to get the data we need. We formatted and analyzed it. We pushed the data to docs using an invoice, and we summarized the results in slides. So uh, the first thing I did, I showed you that native integration with BigQuery. Um, that is available in beta. Um, if you'd like to check it out and learn about the other things that we're using with uh, doing with Sheets and BigQuery and data analysis, uh, please go to gsuite.google.com slash bq-sheets uh, to sign up for the beta, and we'd love to hear your feedback on that feature. Um, all right, so that's it for the first demo, and I'd like to hand it off to Josh to tell you about our REST APIs. There we go. Thanks, Maurice. So as Maurice discussed, AppScript is a lightweight way to automate business processes. Now we're going to take a look at the Sheets and Slides REST APIs, which can be used to perform bulk operations while also communicating with an on-premise system. So here's the setup. You're an account manager, and your company uses an in-house solution to track how much of your products your retail partners have sold. And every quarter, you need to produce a set of presentations for your quarterly business reviews to share how your accounts are performing. To do this, you start with a template presentation, and then you fill in the appropriate data for every account. This is a time-consuming process that we want to automate. So let's take a look at a demo to see how we can use the Sheets and Slides APIs to automate this process. So here's our template presentation. You'll notice that we have these placeholders sprinkled throughout this presentation. So these placeholders correspond to customer attributes that our in-house system understands. So what the first step is going to be is to take these placeholders from this presentation and put them into a spreadsheet. We're going to put them in the, into a spreadsheet so that we have all of our placeholders and customer data in one place so we can validate it, polish it up, and get it ready to put into our final presentations. So let's do that. I'm going to run this command here, which is going to run a Python script to actually create this present, to create the spreadsheet. So I'm going to paste it here. 
So I'm calling this quarterly business review tool with the create sheet operation, and I'm passing it the ID of this template presentation. So it's going to run and then produce the spreadsheet URL for the spreadsheet that it just created. And let's open this up. So here we have a sheet that has all of the placeholders that were in the presentation. So let's take a look at how this works. So this is our quarterly business review tool. So the first thing is we do some auth setup. And then next, we set up some service clients. In this demo, we'll be using the Slides API, Sheets API, and Drive API. So we set up the service clients for all of those. Here we do some command line argument parsing. Nothing too interesting going on here. And then we get to the create sheet method. So the first thing that this does is it gets all the placeholders out of the presentation, as well as the title, using this presentation reader object. Let's dig in a little bit to see how it does this. In the presentation reader, if you call get title or get all placeholders, it first initializes the presentation. So to initialize the presentation, it uses the slides API and calls get presentation to retrieve an API representation of the presentation. So once it has a presentation, if we were to call get title, it asks for the title property and returns that. And in the case of get all placeholders, we take all of the slides in the presentation, iterate over them, and on each slide, we iterate over all of the page elements. A page element is just anything that's on a slide, like a shape, image, table, etc. So in this case, we're going to iterate over all of the page elements of every slide looking for shapes and tables, because those are the ones that contain text. So if we find a shape, we're going to process the text in it. And if we find a table, we're going to iterate over all of the table cells in the table, looking at all of the text in those table cells here. So let's take a look at what processing the text of a shape or table cell means. So the text in a shape or table cell consists of text elements. So we're going to iterate over all of the text elements looking for placeholders. And whenever we find them, we return a list of them. And then up here, we're still collecting all of the placeholders throughout the entire presentation. And then finally, we return a set of the unique ones. So now, jumping back to the QBR tool, we have all of the placeholders in the presentation. And now we want to finally create that spreadsheet. So to do that, we're going to define what the spreadsheet title is going to be, which is just, in this case, going to be data sheet for the presentation title. And then we're going to create an empty spreadsheet. So we're going to call this create spreadsheet function. And we're going to pass through the, size, sorry, the sheets service client, the spreadsheet title for what we want to call the spreadsheet, as well as the sheet titles for all of the sheets we want the spreadsheet to have. In this case, we just want one sheet. And we're going to call that the customer data sheet. So let's take a closer look at what this does. So here's that create spreadsheet function. We're going to be calling the create method on the Sheets API. And we're going to pass in the spreadsheet that we want to create. In this case, we're just creating an empty spreadsheet. So we're going to pass in the title. And then for every sheet that we want to create, pass in the sheets along with the titles associated with those sheets. And then at the end, we return the created spreadsheet. So great, now we have this empty spreadsheet. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the spreadsheet ID and the sheet ID for the newly created spreadsheet. And then using that, we can perform a subs subsequent operation to populate the placeholder data. So we're going to instantiate the spreadsheet writer object, passing it the Sheets API service client and the spreadsheet ID. And then we're going to call these methods. The first method is to populate the column itself. So we're going to pass in the sheet ID, the column index that we want to write to, which is the first column, the column ID, which is placeholders, and then the values that we actually want to write to the column. So I mentioned this thing that we want to uh, call this column ID placeholders. But what is this column ID? Well, in this case, we're using a new feature in the Sheets API, which is called developer metadata. Developer metadata lets you tag a spreadsheet, sheet, rows, or columns in your spreadsheet with metadata. And this is metadata that only the developers can read, and it isn't visible to users. So this means in this case, for example, I'm tagging this column with a placeholder's metadata so that if a user were to accidentally change a header or move a column around, the integrity of the spreadsheet is still maintained, and you can still get the data that you're looking for so your application doesn't break. So I populate the column, and then after that, 
I call this add template ID to spreadsheet metadata, and I pass in the template ID so that I can figure out from the spreadsheet which template is this spreadsheet talking about. So here, like above, we were tagging a column with metadata, and here we're tagging the spreadsheet with the template ID. And then at the end, we call this execute batch update method. So here, it sounds like we're populating a column, and here it sounds like we're adding, a, uh, adding the template ID to the spreadsheet metadata, but here we're just adding stuff to a batch so that we can execute them all at once, and so we can execute multiple operations on your spreadsheet using just one API call. So let's take a closer look at how this works. We're gonna go back to the spreadsheet writer. In this case, we're gonna look at the spreadsheet writer class. The first method we called was populate column, so here, we're creating an update cells request, and here we're gonna essentially just write in the values that we wanna populate into the column, and we add that to this request array. The next thing we do is we create a developer metadata request, and again, we add that to this request array. Here is where we're tagging that column with the developer metadata that we passed in using the metadata key column ID, and the value being the column ID that we passed into this method, in this case, the placeholder string. The last thing we did was call this add template ID to spreadsheet metadata method, which creates, again, a create developer metadata request. But in this case, instead of here where we tag the metadata on a specific columns, here we're tagging it to a spreadsheet. And then we again add this method, add this request to the request array, and finally execute the batch, where we send this list of requests to the server and they all execute together. This, executing them in a batch, helps improve the performance of your applications. So let's go back here. Once we execute the batch, we finally print the spreadsheet URL of, so that we can access the spreadsheet. Great, so that covers how we got to where we are now in the demo. So the next thing we wanna do is populate the spreadsheet with the actual customer data. So I'm gonna run another command. So instead of creating sheet, this time I'm gonna add customers to the sheet. So I'm gonna want to paste in the spreadsheet ID for the spreadsheet that we just created. And so I'm gonna be adding customers to the spreadsheet and I'm gonna pass in the customer IDs for the customers that I wanna populate the spreadsheet with. So I'm gonna run this. Great, so let's see what this did. Going back to our spreadsheet, now it's populated with our customer data. Let's take a look at how this works. So, now we're gonna to go to the add customers method. Here, it takes in the spreadsheet ID and the list of customers we wanna add. And the first thing that we do is we read the placeholders from the spreadsheet that we wrote earlier. We're doing this so that we can finally query our internal data service to fetch the actual customer data. So, in order to read the placeholders, we're gonna first create this customer spreadsheet reader object. I'm gonna pass in the spreadsheet ID and the, the spreadsheet the Sheets API service client, and then we're gonna call this read column data method, and we're gonna pass in the column ID, which was the developer metadata that we tagged the column with earlier. And then we call it execute read. Execute read will then return this customer spreadsheet object that we can use to query the actual properties from the, from the spreadsheet that we fetched when we called execute read. So let's take a closer look at how this customer spreadsheet reader does this. So here, the first thing we did was called read column data. And this is creating a data filter. A data filter is essentially just a way to filter data in a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet can have lots and lots of data in it, but sometimes you only care about certain pieces of it, and you can specify what pieces you're interested in using a data filter. So a data filter can be, I wanna read this specific A1 range, or like in this case, we wanna read specific developer, the content that's tagged by certain specific developer metadata. So I'm gonna pass in the metadata key, which is our column ID, and then the actual column, the metadata value, which is the column ID that we passed into the method. And then I add this to a data filters dictionary. And then finally, when I call execute read, I'm gonna finally call the Sheets API and pass in the data filters that I wanna read, and then it returns to us the appropriate spreadsheet. You'll notice here, we pass in also read fields because a spreadsheet can have lots of properties. And in this case, we don't care about most of them. We only care about a very specific subset. So we're just gonna read those. 
finally comes back this spreadsheet API representation of a spreadsheet, and then we create this customer spreadsheet object by passing through the return spreadsheet, as well as the data filters that we queried. So then when we return, we return this customer spreadsheet object, and then, if you recall, we then ask this uh, customer spreadsheet object to get us the sheet ID, which simply queries the sheet ID off of the spreadsheet object, and then we called get column data, and we passed in the column ID to actually read from the return spreadsheet object the values themselves. So here, we're gonna look up which data filter had this column ID in it, and then return the data for that appropriate uh, part of the spreadsheet. Great, so going back, did I change anything? No. So going back, now that we have the placeholders, we're gonna next process those placeholders into our query parameters. These are the query parameters that we're gonna pass to our internal data service. So in this case, since our placeholders map very well to the properties that our internal system understands, we're just gonna strip off the curly braces and any suffix that's on the placeholder to get our properties, and then we add this to this properties list. Then we're gonna initialize some objects that we're gonna use when we're processing all of our customers. This, the first one is our internal data service, which we're calling the customer data service. It's gonna vend our internal customer data. And then a spreadsheet writer, which is gonna write the data, the customer data finally to the spreadsheet. So now, we're gonna iterate over all of our customers, and the first thing we're gonna do is get the actual customer data from our internal customer data service. Here's where we make that call, but in reality, this can be anything. This can be your internal SQL database, this can be an internal microservice, truly anything. So then, once we get the customer data, we're gonna write this customer data to the sheet. We're gonna first insert a column at index one, so inserting a new column right next to the placeholders column, and then we're gonna populate that similarly to how we populated the placeholders earlier. And in this case, instead of tagging it with the placeholders column ID, we're tagging it with the actual customer ID, and we're passing in the customer data. And we do this for all of our customers, and we queue up a, bat a batch of requests to populate the customer data, and then finally we just execute one write request to the Sheets API to write all of our customer data. So now we have all of our customer data inside the spreadsheet. So now is where I'm gonna polish it up, validate the data, and make sure it looks good before generating those presentations. So I'm looking at it and I see that, oh, our qu quarter over quarter numbers are just numbers instead of percentages. Let's fix that. Cool. Uh, I think our, our data looks good. I think it's time to start generating some presentations. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here and run another command. Instead of adding customers, I'm going to create presentations. So I'm gonna pass in, again, the spreadsheet ID, which contains their customer data, and the customer IDs for all the customers I wanna generate presentations for. So I'm gonna run that, and this is gonna start generating those final template, using those templates, the template earlier, generate the final presentations. So it's gonna start creating that. So we have one just generated for the Mars company, one for Jupiter. Let's take a look at what one of these looks like. So great. Earlier, we had this template with these placeholders in it. Now, it's been filled in, and it has all of the appropriate values that we had for this company in our spreadsheet. So, let's take a closer look at how this works. Now we're getting into the create presentations method. So, the first thing we do is we wanna read the customer data and the placeholders from our spreadsheet. So, Similar to how we read the placeholders when we're adding customer data, we're gonna read the placeholders again, but we're also gonna read the customer data. So we're adding these, we're calling read column data to add the data filters to read all of, these, uh, custom, all of the columns. And then finally, we're gonna execute the read. So we execute one read request that's gonna return all of the data specifically for the placeholders and all the customers we wanna generate presentations for. And then we read the, Finally, we read the placeholders out so we have that available when we're starting to generate our presentations. The next thing we do is we get the template ID from our customer spreadsheet so that we know which presentation to copy in order to finally generate our presentations. We do that as well as get the title from the, of the presentation so that we can have a decent title for our finally generated presentations. And then we start 
generating a presentation for each customer. So for each customer, the first thing we do is use the Drive API to make a copy of the template presentation. And then in the copy, we replace the placeholders with the actual customer data. So we finally fetch the customer data from that return spreadsheet. And then using the a presentation writer, for every placeholder and value pair, we find and replace the placeholder and update it with the actual content. So here, in this case, if our placeholder ends with a dot image suffix, we're going to replace the shape that contains that placeholder with an image. And otherwise, we're going to replace it with text. And then finally, once we've done this throughout the presentation, we're going to execute the batch. So let's take a look at what the presentation writer does. So you'll notice here that this looks kind of similar to what we saw earlier when we were doing this, the spreadsheet writer. Here, we're creating requests, and we're appending them to a list of requests. And so in the case of replace all text, we're going to replace text with text. In the case of replace all shapes with images, we're going to replace sh shapes which have particular text with images that are referenced by this image URL, and also append these to the requests list. And then finally, execute the batch. And then finally, once we're done executing the batch, we're going to print out the presentation URL. And that's it. We're done. So this wraps up the demo. I'm going to switch back to the slides. Great. So let's do a quick recap of what we covered. So the first thing that we did was we took a template presentation, read all of the placeholders out of it, and put that information into a spreadsheet. The next thing that we did was that we queried our internal service to fetch the customer data and push that into a spreadsheet. This part where we queried our internal service really could be anything. We could call, again, our internal SQL database, or we can call an internal microservice. And then once we push this data into a spreadsheet, we then tagged it with developer metadata to make it easier to read in the future and to make sure that user modifications can't affect the structural integrity of our spreadsheet. And the last thing we did was we generated presentations. We made a copy of the template, and then we replaced the values in the, in, replaced the placeholders in the copy of the template with the actual data that we fetched from the spreadsheet. So as we saw, we used the Sheets and Slides API to automate a particular business process. But I'm sure you're wondering, what about a Docs API? So today, we're announcing a developer preview of the Docs API. Um, this is a REST API that works similarly to the Sheets and Slides API. And I'm going to do a quick demo of how we can use the Docs REST API to generate the same template that Marie showed earlier, excuse me, same invoice that Marie showed earlier. Switch back to the demo. So if you recall, this was an invoice template that we used earlier to generate the, the invoices that we wanted to use as the general reminders. So we're going to generate one of these using the REST API. So I'm going to execute a script called generate invoice. And it outputs this document. And let's look, open it up. Great. So it generated an invoice, and we used the, the Docs REST API to do it. So let's open up the code and see if we can follow how this works. So I cheated a little bit. I didn't query Salesforce, and I didn't look up at a spreadsheet. I just have the values that we're going to put into the document right here in the script. But here's where we call the Docs API to do these, to fill out the, the invoice. So the first thing we did was created a copy of the invoice using the Drive API. And then I created a list of requests and then appended those list of requests with these replace all text requests to replace these placeholders with their actual values and then executed the batch. You'll notice here that this looks very similar to how we did this using the Slides API. We work really hard to make sure that our APIs feel consistent so that if you're using one of our APIs that you can start using a different one and it should just feel natural. So that covers the demo. Back to the slides. So this API is still in development. But we're really excited to invite you to join a developer preview program at developers.google.com slash docs. So to wrap things up, 
developers have two major ways to integrate doc sheets and slides to automate workflows. The first one is AppScript. AppScript makes it easy for you to start writing scripts that perform actions across several G Suite services. And it also runs on Google's own infrastructure, so you don't have to worry about managing it on your own. The second are the REST APIs. The REST APIs bring G Suite services to your applications. They allow you to perform bulk operations and also make it possible for you to integrate with your on-premise systems. The main takeaway that we want you to have today is that the docs, sheets, and slides, app script, and REST APIs are approachable, and they can be used to automate parts of your workflows, so people spend their time doing the work that adds value instead. You can learn more about our app script and REST APIs here at developers.google.com slash app script, docs, sheets, and slides. And lastly, if you want to download the code that you saw here today, play with it, run it, you can do so at docsnext18.page.link slash appscript and Python. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>